Welcome back, my night outers. This is DJ Psycho Eddie with George and Tommy Danucci. Uh, Tommy, uh, well, before we get to you, uh, that was uh, 95 Hyde, my way. Uh, if you want to uh, get on our show like Tommy here, get in touch with us at mynightoutradio at verizon.net. Hit us up on our Facebook page. Also, don't forget to check out our website, mynightoutri.com. Okay, now getting back to Tommy. Tommy, you are a native Rhode Islander, correct? That's right. Uh, you're from the Cranston area. Tell us, how did you get started, number one, in film? And how, what do you attribute your success to in filmmaking? Well, I started off uh, right out of school. I went to New England Tech uh, right here in Rhode Island, and they had at the time a, a digital filmmaking program that was just kind of getting rolling. And uh, I loved it, you know, gravitated towards it, got a chance to make my own smaller movies. And then after school, uh, just kept writing and uh, hooked up with some really great people around here uh, that make films, got a chance to intern with Chad Verde a yep. long time ago. And that's kind of, uh, that was sort of the first linchpin into getting everything else to roll for me because uh, I got a chance to put one of my screenplays in Chad's hands and him and his development people read it and really liked it and gravitated towards it and about a year year and a half later we were making the film and I had a chance to direct it and that was my first movie Self Storage which uh, stars Eric Roberts Jonathan Silverman um, and uh, that was kind of uh, my first opportunity to direct and from there it just kind of kept rolling and uh I'm really, really excited about my next film that's coming out May 26th. It's called Almost Mercy. Uh, this is my third feature film that I've written and directed. I uh, wrote this script with an artist by the name of B. Dolan, who's also uh, a, a really popular recording artist, hip-hop artist. Um, so it was great. This was my first script that I wrote with someone else. My last couple screenplays were, were by myself, and it was a, a kind of really refreshing experience to take in someone else's ideas and see how they'd all kind of merge together. And it's great to work with B. Dolan. And um, we're actually excited to be working on our next script. So we have something for next year planned. Um, but back to Almost Mercy, uh, it's coming out May 26th. Uh, it stars Bill Mosley and Kane Hodder. Um, so people of the horror genre, they're going to know who those guys are right away. Oh, definitely. Um, everybody uh, who's seen The Devil's Rejects, a Rob Zombie film, uh, Bill Mosley's performance is quite recognizable in that one. And if you don't know who Kane Hodder is, you certainly know, even if you're not a horror fan, you know who Jason is. Everybody yes. knows Friday the 13th. Right. Uh, so Kane Hodder was the man behind the Jason mask, everyone's uh, favorite hockey mask-wearing, knife-wielding villain. Um, so Kane uh, got an opportunity to play a slightly different character in Almost Mercy, where he actually plays a gym teacher. Uh, so he's not the boogeyman in this movie, which is kind of interesting. And I think it was kind of a fresh thing for Kane to do, uh, play a slightly different character. And the guy's got some acting chops. I think that's what people are going to be shocked about. You know, he, he spent a long time chasing after people with a mask on. But the truth is the guy's a, a classically trained actor as well. And we get to see some of that. And he's got a couple of my favorite monologues in the whole movie. Um, so, yeah, almost mercy. It's a, it's a dark tale. I think people are going to dig well, it. getting back to Kane Hodder. A lot of people, a lot of actors I've seen get pigeonholed. If you play one very memorable character, every time a character that's similar comes up, that's all they consider you for. They're not going to consider you for something else. Sure. Is, is, do you find that to be uh, I do. I do. It, it's, it's accurate sometimes, and I think it's unfair because the truth is these guys are working. You know, that's, that's what they do for work. That's the job that they're being offered. Um, and, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, they're getting offered that role because that's what they're good at. And, um, you know, I've certainly seen that. And that's why on a couple of my films I've tried to get a slightly different performance out of someone who you'd expect something else. Like I worked with Michael Berryman, who, again, a lot of horror fans will know who that guy is. He's, yep. uh, he's the uh, creepy gentleman from The Hills Have Eyes, and he's in a lot of other horror films. And he was a guy who's, again, always played the boogeyman. And, and uh, my second film... Army of the Damned, I, I tried to get him to play more of the guy who comes and saves the day, you know, the reluctant hero. Um, so it's kind of fun to take a, an actor and, you know, play with the type and throw a change up once in a while. Do you find that they easily accept those roles or do they want to stay in that particular role that they're known for? 
so far, uh, I've found them to to really be excited about the chance to play outside of their comfort zone a little bit. Um, for example, you know, for you wrestling fans out there, I know Tony's a wrestling fan. Um, I've been a fan my whole life. Uh, we have Tommy Dreamer in this film, and I've worked with Tommy many times. Uh, really talented actor, great pro wrestler, just a great guy to, to kind of have on your set. And uh, we did something really different. Every, he's kind of known for having this recognizable goatee. Uh, you know, anybody knows Tommy Dreamer. That's kind of just been his look for 15, 20 years. Uh, and I asked him to shave it for this and put on a pair of kind of dorky glasses and part his hair to the side and wear a tie and just play this kind of, uh, you know, stepped on businessman. And it was totally different than anything he'd ever done before and totally different than what his wrestling fans perceive him as. Um, so, you know, we put him in the look and he agreed to do it. And he just looked at me. He's like, he's like I look like Clark Kent's like giant brother or something. I don't <laughs> and uh, it was fun. And, you know, it 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 really I, I think it helped Tommy. And I think he kind of embodied this totally different character that he never played. And it was fun to do. I think it's fun for them to do that and, you know, switch it up. Well, I. I see you dropping a lot of famous, near famous names. You know, people that know certain genres will know these. Do you have like a list of people, or, or can you spend a couple of minutes and just tell us some of the big names that you've worked with? Because you've had pretty, pretty much a, a stellar uh, work list. Yeah, it's been a, a really fun ride for the last few years. I've been lucky, you know. You, you got to be half lucky and you got to be half good. And I've had an opportunity to to work with some really talented people and learn from them. And a lot of that, uh, you know, I got to tip my cap to Chad Verdi, who's my producing partner, and he's the same gentleman who kind of picked me out of that group of interns a long time ago. Um, and he's just got a great relationship with a lot of the, the best agents and managers in the business. And these people kind of know us now. And we've got a great reputation as a company who always treats our actors right, uh, you know, pays everybody on time. And, you know, everybody's treated properly and they have a great experience on set. And, you know, we've made about eight or nine movies now and the word's gotten out. And people want to work with us. And, and these are certain people that we want to work with as well. Uh, so I've had a chance to work with uh, guys like... Uh, you know, it's been fun because it hasn't just been actors. It's been musicians, too. Like Army of the Damned starred Sully Erna, who's the lead singer of Godsmack, of course. And on the other spectrum of music, we had Joey Fatone in that movie as well, um, who are, you know, everybody's favorite uh, hometown uh, NSYNC member. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we, we had uh, Tony Todd in that movie, who, going back to the Legends of Horror, everybody knows the Candyman. Uh, and not to say that Tony's limited to just that role. He's had a, quite the career um, playing many different great parts. Um, Tony Todd, you know, we talked about Eric Roberts a little bit. As an actor, I've gotten a chance to work with guys like Michael Madsen and William Forsyth. And it's been really great. And it's it's because, uh, again, you know, we've got a pretty good reputation as a company that that's pretty easy going to work with. And we put out pretty good material, and everything we do gets a worldwide distribution deal. So far, every movie I've made has been available worldwide on video on demand, and you know these movies get out there. You know, I, I've worked on a lot of projects where, you know, you kind of you put your heart into it and you work really, really hard, and then a year and a half, two years later, you say, "Hey, when when is that coming out?" And you find out that the project just didn't end up materializing. Something happened. They ran out of money. It went sideways. The director went crazy. Whatever it may be. It's not coming out. And that's a really disappointing feeling. So to know that you're going to work for a company that actually gets their stuff out every single time they say they're going to make a movie, it gets made and distributed, and it'll eventually wind up on a shelf at Walmart or you know on your Netflix queue or whatever it is, but you know we're going to get it out there. So what is the name of the company that... Uh, that's you know? Woodhaven Productions. Uh, and we're out of East Greenwich, Rhode Island. We've been there for many years now. Um, and you can check us out... Um, we're uh, we're we're happy to be kind of uh, cranking away and been making a lot of these movies in this genre and and not just in this genre you know I think that's the cool thing that people are going to see about Almost Mercy it's a big departure from just the standard horror movie it's it's not your boogeyman stuff it's not aliens it's not zombies it's the horror that happens in our everyday lives it's the things that we see on the news it's you know sexual abuse it deals with issues of um, you know, violence, uh, issues with violence with police, issues with bullying at school. Uh, a lot of the topics are very current, and uh, 
Yeah, it's the scary stuff that happens in everyday life as opposed to the stuff that happens on, you know, investigation ID or whatever have you, you know. Now, do you find that being in Rhode Island hinders you or helps you get what you're doing done? Uh, you know, it's a good question. I think it's it's always been a help, you know. I think it's given me a little bit of home field advantage. Um, I think people in Rhode Island have been really welcoming and and kind of greeted us with open arms if we've needed things like a location or if we've needed things like oh i need a red corvette 1970s you know oh my uncle fred has one of those or whatever you know like people are more willing to get involved and and um support your movie and, and get it out there you know like i i'm doing the old-fashioned uh you know hanging posters up around town right now hanging banners up and i'm going to a lot of local businesses and local vendors and thank you for the poster by the way george unfortunately wasn't here when you're we welcome i got one in the car though okay, george because i've been stapling them up around telephone <laughs> all right, poles all, all right. around cranston um, if you saw george's face when he found out he didn't get a poster and no, everyone else did priceless, it wasn't. was beautiful <laughs> but what you guys don't know is i have a special one for george oh there you uh, go so there you go <laughs> But uh, yeah, a lot of the local one right next to the tube sock. <laughs> <laughs> the local people have been great. We just mentioned the Thirsty Beaver. There, Ed, Ed's been yeah, gracious yes. enough to kind of let me hang a really cool banner to promote the movie. So everybody's getting behind it. You know, that's yeah. that's a fun thing. You know, um, we see a lot of crap that goes on in the news. You know, like awful things that happen locally, and you hear about corrupt corrupt politicians <laughs> and corrupt cops and you know negative negative stuff. This is a positive thing. This is a bunch of people who got together. Just about everybody in the movie uh, has some kind of Rhode Island connection. You've got your Kane and your Bill, you know, Kane Hodder and Bill Mosley and Tommy Dreamer. But for the most part, a lot of the actors in the movie are Rhode Island folks, you know. So it's been great to kind of, uh, you know, blend a little bit of Hollywood talent with some local people and make a great movie. Cool. Well, why don't we take a break here? Um, when we come back, we, uh, we'll continue this conversation. Uh, you're listening to My Night Out Radio on Rhode Island Free Radio. Uh, we're going to leave here with the Jesse Minute Cinnamon. We'll be back in a minute. What's a barricade? I heard it was a place, oh no. What's an Adderall? It happened to just 